Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me make sure. Good. There we go. Now I can hear me better. Merry Christmas. Good seeing all of you. The sermon this morning is going to be based on our reading from Colossians. And you heard this phrase uh, as it started out, God's chosen ones. Um, I want to start by saying it's good to be back. Uh, after Christmas, a little bit of a Christmas break. I've always appreciated here at Emmanuel, uh, and I was surprised when I got here and found out that uh, at Christmas and Thanksgiving, uh, they have had a tradition where the pastors get to alternate those holidays. And I know it's a little extra work uh, for the ones that stay here, so thank you, Pastor Chris, for that extra work, but it's wonderful to be able to go home, uh, be with family at those different holidays. may only be every other year, uh, but it's still wonderful and nice, especially when some family gets to come visit you. So I do have some family here today. <laughs> Embarrass them a little bit, mom and sister and my nieces. So uh, there you go. Good to have you all here. <laughs> sure to be glad to be pointed out. Um, we, of course, got to open gifts just like everybody else. I hope all of you did. Lots of gifts traded around, right? So you got some pictures of these gifts here. Uh, gift gifting is always fun. It's good receiving them, but it's also a lot of fun giving them, right? You get to think about the person you want to give them to. What would they like? What, uh, what do they want? And, and you, of course, you know, you've got budget stuff to think about, and you hope they will like it, and it's always a little interesting. I find out, of course, on Christmas morning or whenever you do the gift giving, especially with little ones, they've got duplicates of something. I've already got this, or other comments that get made about gifts, and they, eh, eh. Okay, and I like stuff that you didn't expect uh, or, or, or didn't get as excited about other things. Um, as far as gifts go, here's some of the things, some of what I got, but other, other things tied to part of my break. Now, this is something else. So I got lights. Now, this cracks me up because as a kid, any of you kids, would you be excited about getting lights for Christmas? No. Any other adults might get a little excited. These are the backyard lights, right? You get to string up in the backyard. So I hope it's going to look pretty. I'm really excited about it, actually. So I got some lights. I learned some new things about other gifts that I saw. I did not get this next one. I just want to make clear. Um, <clears throat> who knows what this next one is? Who knows what those are? What are they? LOLs. Okay, so I could have picked who would know because two little girls right there got a mess of these things, and it's, they're called LOL dolls, and there's this whole thing. It reminds me of like trading card games when you're a kid, when we were, you know, others were younger, you don't know what's in the package, and so it's just a guess what you're going to get, and you might get one you like, you might get a duplicate, you might not, there's all sorts of stuff. I learn more about LOL than I, <laughs> I'll just be nice. If you have any questions, I have two over here who could tell you quite a bit about it later on. There's one gift I did not get this year that has been a staple of my gift uh, pile for years. Sorry, Mom. She's looking curious now. <laughs> I did not get my socks. So, and actually she's probably nodding now. Oh yeah, I forgot to give those to him. So, um, Anyway, I didn't get my socks, thankfully, right? We all have all sorts of gifts and things that we like uh, and, and different uh, reasons we get them and, and this. Um, I'm thankful I've, I've moved past the socks. And we love, we love getting gifts. We love the receiving it. We love the giving of them. Uh, Paul is talking about gifts today in the reading. So far... Prior to today's section, he's been talking about the Christian life, and he's been talking about things we should get rid of, things that do not belong in the Christian life. Uh, he, he talks about getting rid of anger, malice, rage, and he has this long list of things. Today, as we get to the reading, though, as, as we get to the part that we heard uh, Chad read a little bit ago, he lists qualities that we should embrace as Christ Christians. Right? He, he uses a very specific phrase as he describes this to us. Put on then as God's chosen ones. Okay, and he goes on. Get rid of the old stuff. Anger, wrath, all those other things. But, but put on 
the good stuff. And, and the imagery that I hope comes to mind a little bit, tied to some of the gifts we get, is, is new clothes, right? Here's the good things you should be wearing, okay? And he goes on with this list. So, so what are some of the things that Paul, that, well, as it's God's word, as Jesus is talking to us, what is it that Jesus wants us to have? So he goes on with this list. Compassionate hearts is the very first one he lists. So you know I like to put in pictures and things. Uh, what story do you think this picture comes from? Good Samaritan, right? Uh, it, it's this parable that Jesus tells about loving your neighbor. It's the guy that's beaten and left for dead on the side of the road. Two folks pass him. Two folks that should have known better, should have stopped to show compassion and help him. And yet it's the Samaritan, the one who is kind of an enemy of the people, the one who is really jarring for people to see had compassion on this traveler left for dead. Jesus lists this as the first one. Paul lists this as the first one in our reading today. Put on then compassionate hearts. Who in your world could use some compassion from you? Put off, remember early in the reading I said he's telling people to get rid of the old sinful stuff. Put off the, the passing somebody by. We each have somebody in our world right now that, well, I hope you can think of somebody who you can be compassionate to, who needs to know that they're loved and cared for just because, who may have been beaten up and left for dead, so to speak, who people are passing by each and every moment. Who can, who can you, as Jesus invites us to do this, to put on a compassionate heart? Who can you show that care for as we hear that encouragement today. He goes on, though. That's not the only thing, is to have compassionate hearts. And I, I love this picture. This isn't a Bible story picture, but I loved it as I Googled, I Googled kindness, and here's what came up. I love that picture. It's cute. Right? This little kid knows the dog's thirsty. I'm not saying I want to drink out of that fountain anymore. <laughs> but boy, it's a cute picture of this little boy showing kindness to the dog, knows the dog's thirsty, uh, and he shows by doing that, just pressing the button, okay? Same question. Who is it in your life that needs some kindness? If we're putting on kindness and we're getting rid of other things, where, where is there anger? Where is there hostility? Where is there a lack of kindness in your life? And who is getting that from you? Or who's just not getting any kindness at all? Maybe somebody that's getting attacked by others, and who can you show this kindness to? Again, understand, he's saying, put on these things. Put on compassionate uh, hearts. Put on kindness. These are traits that are ours as Christians, right? And Jesus is inviting us through Paul's letter here to put these things on. Who can you show a kindness to? The list goes on. Humility. What story? It's easy, I hope, right? What story is this? Jesus is washing the people's feet, specifically his disciples. This is the king of creation. This is God almighty, all-knowing, all-seeing, God of the universe, doing what? Washing somebody's feet. And they weren't feet that had nice new Christmas socks on. <laughs> nice, clean, were in the shower that morning. These were feet that had been walking on a dirt road, were gross, no doubt, and the king of creation, the savior of all mankind, the baby in the manger, takes time to wash his disciples' feet to show humility. And remember, the disciples resisted. Peter's like, no, 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 I'm not going to do this. You're not going to do this, Jesus. He understood some of what was happening here, but Jesus says, if you don't have me here, you don't have me at all, right? Who, who can we show humility to? Who can you put on humility for? Are there, are there those that you're in touch with on a daily basis, on an irregular basis, whatever the contact is, where some humility is in order? To show that as a follower of Jesus, as, as a disciple of his, you can put on some humility. To show that you're not above anything. That you're a follower of Jesus that follows that example. The list goes on. We could be here a long, for a long morning. He goes on with the reading. Meekness, gentleness, forgiveness, 
uh, show love to each other. Let there be peace amongst yourselves. Let there be thankfulness. He lists thankfulness three times in the reading. And to be honest, if we were to go through all this, and, and probably even as in that short list that I expanded upon there, as you start to hear these things, it gets to be a little tiring. Because you start to think, you know what, I have tried this, and you know what, you're right, I do need to try this. And we try day in and day out, I hope we try day in and day out, to do these things. And to have that long list and to always be thinking about it actually kind of starts to get a little, and I found another good picture, I think. There's a dog theme today. <laughs> we just get tired. I looked, up, I looked up exhausted, and this is one that came up. <laughs> right? We have this list. Be meek, be gentle, be forgiving, have love, be at peace, be thankful, and humility, kindness, compassion, and hearts. Get rid of, and, and there's a, don't forget, there's the long list of things we get to get rid of, and it's hard. It's so easy to do all these other things that we're not supposed to be thinking, and it's easy not to, to do the stuff we should. And we try and try because, Lord, I want to follow you. I want to be right. And we flat out wear ourselves out. I, at least I hope some ways you feel a little worn out because that means there's some effort there, right? But listen to what he says. Go back earlier in the reading today. He tells us, put on then as God's, God's what? chosen one. Let me get to my note. Put on then as God's chosen one, and this is a description of you as you read it. Put on then as God's chosen one. Who's holy and beloved? Let's do like we did with the kids. Who's holy and beloved? I am. Well, wait a minute. I'm not... I don't always show a compassionate heart. I'm not always kind. I don't always show humility. I certainly can scratch many of those out. And yet, well, and I hope you got your own list. There are things you're failing to do. I'm exhausted from trying. And yet, God says what? I am holy and beloved. You, you are holy and beloved. How? How is it that we can be described as that? I mean, Paul, he's getting ready to launch into this list, but he describes us first as God's chosen one, and I'll say ones, God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, put on these things. How can he describe you that way? Because these are gifts. You have been given the gift of a compassionate heart. You don't have to find a compassionate heart you have a compassionate heart. You do not have to find kindness within yourself. It is yours. You don't have to find humility. You don't have to find meekness, gentleness. You don't have to find it because it's yours. Where did you get it? This is Pastor Tyner's signature move to the baptismal font. <clears throat> right? In the language of this chapter, in chapter 3, there's a lot of this putting off and the putting on, remember, and that's language that we use of dying and rising. Put off the old stuff, put to death the old stuff, the anger, rage, malice, sexual immorality, it says put away all this stuff. It happens here. Jesus comes in with the water and the word and he washes you completely clean. He takes all of that away. All those bad things he has taken away from you. And he puts on you meekness, gentleness, forgiveness, love, peace. He has clothed you. Romans 6 tells us we have died with Jesus. All the sin has been taken away. And we rise with Jesus through the waters of, of baptism. These gifts are yours. Recognize them within you. It's not a matter of trying to use them. They're there. And Scripture says that as we recognize that, as we recognize this good news that it is yours already, that it's not something that you have to try harder to do, it says that they will overflow from you. Because you see, it's not a matter about looking at you and just seeing the fact that I can't do these things. It's about, because when we look at us, we just get exhausted. Just worn out. 
But if we fix our eyes on Jesus, if we remember what happens in baptism, we have life and you're filled with his spirit and these things flow from you. So, so yes, we look at ourselves and see that we've, we've failed to do that, but, but remember this word, put on then. God's chosen one. You were chosen. You were chosen right here in the waters of baptism to be his, and he declared you. This is his word, not, not Pastor Tyner's, not Pastor Chris's. He declared you holy. He declared you righteous and beloved. Let that love of Christ fill you up. Let it dwell within you. He, he encourages you in that rest of that passage to, to let the word dwell in you richly. That's how you get reminded of this each and every day. Be in the word. Let that word remind you of his love. Remember your baptism. Remember the cross. Keep your eyes fixed there. When you struggle, when you say, you know what, I haven't, I haven't been any of those things that he listed, say, you're right. But I have been clothed with Christ, and those gifts are mine, and they, they flow from me because Christ is there and has given me those gifts. In his name, amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus from now to life everlasting. Amen.